Surprise Munchak, it's the deer that stalker Helen Tinner wasn't expecting. <laughs> Grouse over unusual pointers. We watch a Bracco Italiano at work in the Peak District. Yeah, but yeah, we started off with all great intentions. Pointed birds only, and that soon got scrapped. <laughs> What's the latest on fox hunting in Northern Ireland? The Antis are drawing battle lines and preparing to try and ban it. And John only seeks to divide the community uh, on that, and it'll only stir up tensions, which is not what we want. We're giving away a £600 Athlon scope, kindly donated by Rifleman Firearms. News leads, of course, on the sad death of the Queen. We have Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. You can be a professional deer stalker. You can take your stalking and deer management seriously enough to go out several times a week. You can even do it as part of a weekend away with friends. Helen Tinner is visiting her friend Gareth Maund, who runs the Lestrange Shoot at Hunt Stanton in North Norfolk. Where we are at the moment, we're about a mile from the sea in uh, Old Hunt Stanton Park. It's been in the, in the same family for, I gather, about uh, a thousand years. My part of the estate is I run the, the game shoot and deer stalking simulated game days and that on the estate. Professional photographer Helen took up stalking relatively recently. You can watch her shoot her first roe muntjac fallow and Chinese water deer on Field Sports Channel. Up until now she's been using a Browning X-Bolt rifle in 243 calibre. She especially likes having a true left-handed rifle with the bolt on the correct side for her left-handed shooting position. That rifle did well. Now she's bought another, an almost identical Browning, but in a bigger calibre. It's a 308 Browning, um, and I got this one because we're going up to Scotland soon, aren't we? Yep. To shoot um, Red Stag and um, Seeker. Today she wants to check the zero on her new combination of X-Bolt with ATEC moderator Zeiss V6 scope and Hornady 165 grain ammo. Yeah, the grouping's OK. But they're just... In the wrong place. OK. So if we, were, if we moved it across... Why, why would that have gone out then, since I've used it? It happens sometimes. Which way do you go? See, well, it's got a little arrow Oh, there. right, so we want right. to go more to the left. Yeah. So I've just moved that six centimetres yeah. to the left. Oh, right. OK. Or I've moved it seven and one back. Should I do another one? Yeah, next one down. Oh. You're rushing. I know, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looked close. It was close. <laughs> that, was just, that was just where the, where the cloud is. It was, it just, was just underneath. The, it was just at the bottom, slightly left. It affects those a lot more yeah. when you're shooting at range. With the combination zeroed, Gareth wants to get Helen out of her comfort zone, trying out some new shooting positions. Keep trying to get her comfortable in, get her used to different styles of stalking. And Just trying to work with different things she might come across when you're out in the field, really whether it be sort of sat at the bottom of the tree or shooting off sticks or lying prone or... Range time over, Gareth has a couple of jobs to do before taking Helen out on a stalk. He leaves Helen to think over what she's learned. We just had um, had some game delivered earlier on today, so uh, I just had to disappear off and just check that was all all right. I said to Helen, uh, just keep your eyes out while we're, while we're waiting. You said you might see a muntjac moving down the side of the wood there. A lot of these woods have got sort of low bramble cover and that, which we use for the game shooting. And we get too many muntjac in here, they they just 
wipe that out. They just take all the leaves off. There he is. Oh my God, let's do it. Right, shall we go up to the bank then and shoot from the top? Confidence boosted by her earlier practice, Helen sets off on what is her first ever solo stalk. She moves to the top of the bank and gets down into a prone position to shoot off the bipod that's still attached to the rifle. It was a com I, it was a confident shot. I mean, I'm not jumping up and down and being all like excited and stuff because to me it's still like you're taking an animal. But I have to keep reminding myself that it is part of a cull. But you're still taking a life. But it'll make very nice eating now. This is what we're saying about confidence, isn't it? With your distance as well. That felt like a sort of comfortable distance and I could... Very similar to what we were shooting at targets. It was. Yeah. Probably roughly around the same. Yeah. Excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> Told you you'd get one here. <laughs> Where was that? Over there, where you said. Top guy, did you see? <laughs> Absolutely. Good? You got your knife? No, it's back of the ranch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, shot placement was good on that. Um, so obviously all the range work earlier on in the day paid off. You've got to do a twisty thing. Yeah, up there like that. Helen is keen to learn about dealing with the carcass, from bleeding it in the field to gralicking, skinning and jointing. By the time we're done, it's well and truly dark. Gareth has one last surprise in store. He's cooked up a tasty meal with ingredients from the shoot, with slow-cooked partridge followed by blackberry and apple crumble. It's been amazing. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. For Browning rifles, Zyscopes and even Hornady ammunition, visit kitfinder.co.uk and you can find the Lestrange shoot on Instagram. Thank you, Helen, for that. Now, members of the Field Sports Nation get to back our news output. They get to win prizes. This week, it's a £600 rifle scope, a fabulous Athlon 4.5 to 27 by 50 Midas BTR, kindly given to us to give away by Somerset and online gun shop Rifleman Firearms. And they get discounts on kit from gun shops. Thanks to John Bailey, Field Sports Nation members can enjoy two discounts throughout September from gun shop Bailey's Shooting and Country Wear in Staffordshire and online. 10% off clothing and accessories and 5% off optics and thermal. Sounds good? Want to join the Field Sports Nation? There's a link below. Now, already in the, this week's show, we have seen a, a startled creature step out of the undergrowth. Next up, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Six gamekeepers carried the oak coffin of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth from Balmoral's ballroom to the hearse, which then took her on to Edinburgh, where she lay in state. The men had shared walks with the monarch over the grouse moors and mountains that surround Balmoral. Country people lined the route on horses, in tractors and on foot. The Queen's coffin travelled to London, where she was greeted with a guard of honour at Buckingham Palace on Tuesday. She was transferred to Westminster Hall, where she will lie in state for four days. A busy shooting ground, a minute's silence was held before the F-Class European Championship. The British competition F-Class team then fired off a 96-gun salute. Her Majesty's funeral will be held at Westminster Abbey on the 19th of September 2022. The occasion will be marked with a public bank holiday. David Clark was the Sandringham Estate Headkeeper and is Honorary President of the National Gamekeepers Organisation. She had a great passion for people that worked in the countryside and had a great understanding of people that actually worked in the countryside. But uh, she, loved her, she loved her subject, she loved the people um, of, of, of this country and abroad as well. She, she, she was a great ambassador and uh, she'll be sorely missed by us all. She was fabulous. In other news, an English angling club is considering legal action against Thames Water. It's after a burst pipe led to polluted water flowing into the River Ray, a tributary of the River Thames. 
The South Cerny Angling Club holds the fishing rights to the River Ray at Seven Bridges where the pollution has killed all the fish. Anglers counted more than 2,000 dead fish in one sampling area, including chub, pike and barbel, and expects the pollution to continue killing downstream. A Thames Water spokesperson says protecting the environment is fundamental to what we do, and we are sad to say the pollution caused by a burst pipe near Hayden End sewer pumping station has caused the death of fish in the River Ray. The Goldsmith family is keeping its influence in DEFRA. Vigilante rewilder Ben Goldsmith has lost his post as a DEFRA board member after a string of scandals, including him lying to his neighbouring landowners in Somerset about the illegal release of feral pigs. However, Lord Zach Goldsmith, who provided former Prime Minister Boris Johnson with the holiday home in Spain, stays on as DEFRA minister, allowing him to continue to push an animal rights agenda on the English countryside. DEFRA is now headed by anti-hunting Ranul Jayawardena, MP. Goldsmith's opposite number is pro-hunting Lord Benyon, and the DEFRA ministerial team consists of pro-hunting Victoria Prentice and anti-hunting Steve Double. New government guidelines will allow farmers to kill beavers if they threaten crops. DEFRA and Natural England published the new rules, which will come into force on the 1st of October 2022. Some farmers have criticised the government for not consulting them about the new plans to protect beavers. The NFU wants to see government engaging with farmers and landowners before it finalises the national approach to the wild release of beavers. It wants farmers to have the adequate tools and support to manage a species that could affect their businesses and food production. Amber Hill has won gold in women's skeet in the European Championships in Cyprus. The victory secures her a Team GB quota place for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. It's the latest win for the shooter who claimed the accolade of the most successful Briton in international shooting when she won her silver at the World Cup in South Korea in July this year. In Cyprus, there was also a bronze medal in men's skeet for Ben Llewellyn. Basque wants you to nominate your favourite game meat business or individual for their Eat Game Awards. Basque set up the awards five years ago to promote the use of wild game and its benefits. It features eight different categories, including best small and large game retailer, restaurant, pub, game butcher and influencer. Last year's awards attracted nominations for more than 250 different businesses and individuals. The public vote on 10 nominations in each category from the beginning of December to the 10th of January 2023. Link below. So this can be somebody who um, does a great uh, social media page that really promotes game meat or it could be somebody who's just been in the press this year for something that they've done um, and, and that's caused quite a storm so they are very very important and the other one of course is educator because it is all about education a former world angling champion is calling on the government to promote fishing in wales Hal Morgan says it will increase the economic benefits for rural communities. The BBC quotes the former European fly casting champion and Field Sports Channel presenter, saying the money generated by angling tourism could be doubled. A study by Natural Resources Wales says fishing adds £20 million each year to the Welsh economy. Hal says Wales could see bigger benefits if more people knew about its top-class fishing waters. The angler says Wales has great sea trout, salmon, brown trout, grayling and fantastic coastal fishing. Peyton Zoo in Devon was forced to close its doors for a few days when two birds were found to have avian flu. A pelican and a peafowl had the disease. DEFRA and its Animal and Plant Health Agency investigated the outbreak. Most of the zoo's other birds did not have to be culled. Instead, the zoo caught them up and placed them in what it calls biosecure quarantine facilities and delayed the arrival of three lions from Newquay Zoo. DEFRA brought in its own shooters to knock down some of Peyton's bird collection that evaded capture. Thanks to Richard Walton for the story. More than 100,000 people have signed a petition to support hunting in Europe. The European Federation for Hunting and Conservation, called FACE, says that problematic policymaking threatens bird hunting, habitat for large game, large carnivore management, Europe's hunting cultures and incentives to conserve nature. FACE claims 80% of rules and regulations affecting hunting and conservation come from Brussels. So far, more than 112,000 people have signed the petition. The link to the petition is in the description below. A project to keep down rats using raptors in Israel has spread its wings to Africa and the United Arab Emirates. 
the National Barn Owl Project, which was funded by the Israeli Ministry of Agriculture in conjunction with Tel Aviv University, was set up in 2022. It puts out nest boxes to encourage barn owls and kestrels to breed in order to control rodents. Morocco is now adopting the idea and the UAE's Minister for Climate Change and Environment has agreed to it too. The Ministry of Agriculture says a single barn owl can kill up to 6,000 rodents a year and is a better alternative to chemicals. A city in the Netherlands claims to be the first in the world to ban most meat adverts from public spaces. Haarlem will bring in the rule from 2024. The Green political party GroenLinks drafted it, claiming that meat impacts the climate. The city's government says it's not yet decided whether to include what it calls sustainably produced meat in the ad ban. And finally, the New Yorker magazine covers lionfish hunting. Under the headline, Killing Invasive Species is now a competitive sport, the notoriously urban magazine covers the annual lionfish spearing competition, where there are prizes of almost $100,000 in total. The article says the tournament killed more than 10,000 lionfish, and the winner walked away with an $18,000 profit. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Buying shooting kits? Then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website. Thank you, David. And just a reminder, you can click on links to all of those stories in the description below, including our own tribute to Her Late Majesty the Queen. Now, later in the show, we're looking at a new division in Northern Ireland created by the League Against Cruel Sports. Next, some shoots are about the guns, some are about the birds. I go to Derbyshire's Dark Peak for a day about the dogs. Most people who have unusual breeds of dog don't know why. They like them. Someone recommended them. The Bracco Italiano is an unusual breed. This owner knows exactly what it does and she and her dog are doing it. And that is a good reason to have a dog. I am out on an HPR training day at Edale in Derbyshire's Dark Peak. If you're a rambler, you will know Edale as one of the start or end points of the Pennine Way. If you're a grouse shooter, you should know Edale because it offers excellent walked-up days, today hosting the German Wirehead Pointer Club and Friends. Well, we had four DWPs, three GSPs and one Bracco Italiano. Well, it's a training day, really. It's a chance for handlers to get you know, their dogs on to grouse, not under trial conditions. And yeah, just to see where they're at, really, if they're ready for any any trials or feel, any field work, really. The four-year-old Bracco makes the first retrieve of its career, and its owner is delighted. It's a low-pressure day, both on the birds and on the guns. S some places you go, there is pressure, you know, and and here it's yeah, it's friendly. There's there's so much ground to cover. Um, there's there's no uh, yeah. It's just an enjoyable day. You know, for us as guns, we, we like to see, I, well, personally, I like shooting over dogs more than anything. Uh, preferably my dogs, but I like shooting over other people's dogs as well because you learn stuff by watching other people. The handlers learn by watching other handlers. Um, and it's, it's uh, yeah, a learning experience for everyone and a good bit of fun. There are some tricky retrieves. One young dog has to go after a pricked bird. Gunner came on a flashpoint and a cover got up. Um, he was shot, clipped. Um, and it went down, had a back wind behind it, and it went down the hill. It, it carried on down, down, the, down in the valley, in the gully. Sit. Oi! Um, so we had to obviously rush after it because we want, don't want an injured bird going on. So. The retrieve is successful, and in the windy conditions, the day ends up being mainly about the retrieves. I, I mean, we started off, you know, with the wind at our backs, it was more H and R rather than P, wasn't it? Uh, really? yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, we started off with all great intentions, the pointed birds only, and that soon got scrapped. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a good dog to point birds in these conditions, and the birds are a bit jumpy anyway, especially when you've got a backwind. And um, I think yeah. with, with quite a few in the gallery as well, we're making quite a bit of noise, you know, with a backwind, so they're just... But the do dogs are at different standards, you know, you've got some, some open standard field trial dogs and you've got some very beginner novice handlers, novice dogs, so, you know, it's for them to learn and if we can drop the birds for them, that's ideal. If, uh, if it doesn't all go to plan, then it's just, you know, it's training, keep going until you find some more birds to shoot. By the end of the day, we have seen grouse in the hundreds, we have shot six or seven brace and the dogs and their owners return home wiser.
For more about the German Wirehead Pointer Club, go to gwpclub.com. And to find out about shooting or even rambling at Edale, visit edalegathering.com. Thanks, Lloyd Birch, who is a Field Sports Nation member, for inviting me along. Uh, everyone here at Field Sports Channel joke that my mission is to film every single one of our members going hunting, shooting or fishing. Well, they might be right. Now, when Field Sports Nation member Albert Titterington kindly invited me to the Irish Game Fair in the summer, it became an opportunity to find out the latest on the proposed ban on hunting with hounds, which may even extend to trail hunting. For a people who have seen more than their fair share of fighting, the anti-hunting lobby is drawing up new battle lines. In 2021, the Northern Ireland Assembly rejected John Blair's private member's bill, which sought to ban hunting wild animals with dogs. The Stormont Assembly has been unable to sit since the May 2022 elections. It stalled as one of the parties, the DUP, refused to re-enter power-sharing institutions. They refused to take part in the Assembly over issues around the Northern Ireland Protocol. Once the executive is functioning again, which everybody expects it will, Alliance Party MLA John Blair says he will return to the battle and put up his bill again. Speaking at the Irish Game Fair earlier in the summer, the Countryside Alliance says the bill may be the start of a vendetta against the country way of life, but the field sports community cannot afford to be complacent, as the bill is a pledge in the Alliance Party's manifesto. He is causing a divide um, between country folk and the town people. So it is, you know, we live and work in the countryside. We understand how nature works. And John, and I would have thought with his background in inland fisheries, that he would understand how the countryside works. But he obviously is putting that to one side. And if there was an attack on fishing or angling, come forward, and we've seen such things in the, the fish report from the Conservative Party, would he now change his, his position on angling? So there's, like, he hasn't engaged with the hunting community for himself to find out the facts for himself. So why would you take an attack on somebody if you don't know the facts yourself? So it's very disappointing, but the hunting community continue to pull together. We continue to, to strive to ensure that there's a future for a huntsman and for hunting going on for many years to come. So if he wants to bring it ahead, that's fine. But from our point of view, we'll just have to face the challenge and, and take, it, take it head on. The bill was defeated by 45 votes to 38 last December. Jonathan Buckley, DUP MLA, sitting here with Westminster DUP MP Jim Shannon, voted against it but says it's still dangerous for Northern Ireland, the whole of the UK and the south of Ireland. I think country sports need to realise that there's a, a bigger fight here ahead and it's not just about the, the hound and, and the huntsman, it's where this bill could eventually lead to. And today it's the huntsman and the hound. Tomorrow it could be the gunman and the gun dog. The day after that it could be the angler and the rod. And I think for, for me the, the biggest takeaway from this bill is that if country sports enthusiasts right across the United Kingdom and indeed Ireland don't come together, stand together and work together for what is achievable, we're only going to uh, face difficult, uh, more difficult days uh, to come in this next mandate. Kieran Young runs the dog show at the Irish Game Fair and is a member of the Irish Working Terrier Federation. He says the bill could make criminals of all dog owners. If your animal chases rabbits, hares, foxes or even a grey squirrel while you're out walking, shooting, checking your livestock or engaged in any other activity, you will be committing an offence. It makes things we've done all our lives and, and using natural instincts of animals to control other predator animals and it all of a sudden makes us criminals um, and yeah he may disagree with us but there's quite a strong number of us that agree. Jim Shannon, DUP MP for Strangford, believes the rural community needs to unite behind defeating the bill. This battle, this fight, this potential uh, new uh, bill coming to, to, to the, the assembly where Johnny and, uh, and, his, and his colleagues will be able to, to combat it directly. I think it's one that we all have to um, be united, teamwork to oppose. As you would well know, Charlie, mm. country sports is apolitical. Yeah. There's people that enjoy, it's cross class as well. There's mm. people that enjoy country sports in different forms of country sports in Northern Ireland and further afield mm -hmm. that have political views and no political views. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's not an issue. 
is about pulling together like-minded people to ensure that we can preserve uh, a noble profession uh, and, and actually recognize man's part within nature. I'm a keen conservationist. I recognize man's part to play within that. And for those that try to uh, whitewash that from the history books and uh, say that man has no part to play and therefore the animal in which is under their jurisdiction has no part to play, they're wrong. They simply don't understand the countryside. Sinn Féin helped boot the bill out of Stormont, though the party has no formal position on fox hunting. Ronan Gorman, who runs Country Sports Ireland, says the Assembly doesn't want the bill as it failed at its second reading without a full debate. And we will be far more cohesive uh, going forward. We, that means we will address things like talking at the right times and not the wrong times. And it means that we will be speaking to the people that need to be spoken to who make the decisions politically. And I'm confident that having defeated Mr Blair's bill the last time round at the very first opportunity, which actually is the first time, believe it or not, it's the first time a bill to restrict any kind of country sport was defeated at such an early stage. So for us, things aren't getting worse in that respect. That's better. Uh, and I would say that next time round, we will be even better again. Well, we're going to fight it. For, with everything we have, we are going to fight it. We're going to stand up for what we believe is the best way to conserve the countryside. We've been doing it for hundreds of years. The countryside, they're saying that we're um, to be in detrimental to hunting created that countryside. It keeps that in the natural balance, you know, and like, you hear mad things about rewilding this. And re we live in a very small island. There's a, very lot, there's a great deal of people on that island. Rewilding is, is madness and, you know, country sports contributes to the countryside we have and if that goes, it's detrimental entirely to our native fauna and, you know, it's, it's going to be terrible for the countryside. In Northern Ireland, there are 12 registered packs of hounds and around another 30 unregistered. Patrick Hedden is a professional huntsman with the oldest hunt on the whole of the island of Ireland. There's the support here if if we all stand up and be counted. But if people sit back and wait, it's, it's too late. Um, you, have to, you have to put yourself out and let people know that you're not wrecking and ruining the countryside. Across the water in England, when the band came in there, we were too late to stand up and be counted. And the same will happen here if we don't stand on our feet now and stick our hands in the air and let people know that we're there. There are voices of dissent within field sports. Angler Trevor Green is unusual. He is a fly fisherman who is against hunting with hounds. I think it's unnecessary. Uh, I, uh, I know that uh, uh, cult culling the fox population is the reason given uh, for uh, 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 kill, kill, killing the animals. Uh, but I do think it could be done more uh, humanely than, uh, than, uh, uh, than with dogs. You will see from our film with John Blair that anglers are generally against the proposed ban. Despite Trevor's views, fox hunting is a northern and southern Irish cross community triumph. John Blair, like Tony Blair before him, is trying to drive a wedge into rural communities. Country sports is non-political. Everybody from all walks and back backgrounds just gets on with it. It's one of the, the few opportunities in Northern Ireland where you can just set it to one side, leave your politics at the door and let's go out and enjoy a day's hunting or a day's shooting or a day's fishing. You have that bit of crack and then whenever you're finished, Monday morning, whatever it may be, then you go back to what, you know, your particular side. But while you're carrying out that activity, one of the few that we have, we just get on with it. And, and John only seeks to divide the community uh, on that and it'll only stir up tensions which is not what we want. I think John has two fold, two issues in my opinion. A, he has been driven by extremists, by people who uh, see all country sports as things that only the toffs do at the weekends and their big mansions and their horses and their, their parties and all the rest. And that complete nonsense misconception. So he's driven by that kind of uh, prejudice from the outset. Uh, and of course, the other thing is he doesn't understand what he's trying to do. And that came out in all of the debates in, in Stormont and on radio and television. He doesn't understand what he's trying to do. And if you don't understand it, it's always going to look silly. It's not going to make sense. The community isn't going to buy into it. And 
the politicians and Stormont seen through it at the first stage and rejected it because it was didn't make sense to them either. The battle lines are drawn. The field sports community is prepared for the fight when it comes as they're determined not to allow John Blair's bill to rob them of their way of life. Thanks all those who took part in that. Now to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube brought to you by James Marchington. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Here is Seek One's take on the idea of Field to Fork. They're hunting giant alligators in Florida and cooking up the jowls with their own special sauce. Filmmaker David Knowles uploads another episode from the ever popular Old Country series with Jack Hargreaves. In this one, first broadcast in 1984, Jack shows how to make a net to catch eels and goes in search of a dipper. Daryl McAleenan sends us this one of a day's decoying pigeons and crows over stubble with his dad who brought along his non-shooting friend Jack. Daryl says Jack loved the day and will be over the moon to see his video featured here. The Meat Eater team are out in Virginia for the opening day of the dove shooting season. They spend a day brushing up their skills on clays, then make a good bag of doves and demonstrate some tasty looking recipes. Thanks to Mark Corney for sending that one in. Elsewhere in Virginia, Hoke Outdoors are fishing and shooting from kayaks in this early season goose hunt. Plenty of shooting action and some of the gear gets a dunking. Meanwhile in Colorado, the hunting public channel is bow hunting and has a close encounter with a big bull elk. It's a gritty hunt and an even grittier pack out. Back in the UK, Rabbit Express is ferreting on some nice open ground, which gives the dogs a good run and ends up with a bag of 23. And finally, here's a glimpse into the harsh world of a native Siberian hunter, with a look at trapping as well as hunting for Cabacali, Black Grouse and Hazel Grouse. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link. Charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click like us on Facebook and on Instagram. You can pop your email address into our registered page. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and you will get to see news of this show field sports britain is at 7 p.m uk time every wednesday and this has been field sports britain good hunting good shooting good fishing and goodbye <laughs> <laughs>